Okay, hello girls and boys of the fifth grade. Um, today we're going to talk about lesson 90 found on page 586 in your books. Um, the title is Reducing Fractions Part 2. Obviously there was a part 1, so this is just kind of building on that last lesson that we learned about a week ago. Um, the first objective that we're going to learn about today, reduce fractions to lowest terms by dividing both terms by common factors or by the greatest common factor, the GCF of the terms. Okay, so if we get a fraction 4 eighths, we understand that because the numerator is half of the denominator, that that equals 1 half. Sometimes we're, we're going to know those off the tops of our heads because we're becoming more efficient and, and more understanding of different math terms. Um, we're basically skipping the step. Uh, we're skipping finding the greatest common factor of these two numbers. But if we wanted to take the long way around it, we would divide 4 eighths by 4 over 4. Understand that 4 over 4 is 1, 8 over 4 is, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and we still get the same answer, 1 half. Um, if we get a more complex one, I've drawn that one down here. Um, we start with the fraction 6 eighths. First we find the, the common, or the, the factors of 6 down here, and the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Then I find the factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. You find the greatest common factor, understanding that 1 and 2 are both factors of 6 and 8. The greatest one is 2. So we divide the fraction 6 eighths by 2 halves. We get 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And we get the fraction 3 fourths. The second objective that we'll learn, um, write percents as reduced fractions in lowest terms. If you ever get a percent, 20%, remember that you just put this percentage over 100. Okay? And then the next step is, uh, of course, find greatest common factors and then divide both terms by, that, by those common factors. Okay? Let's start with 20. We have 1 and 20, of course. This number ends in a 0 and it's even. It's even, so we divide it by 2. Uh, 2 times 10 is 20. Um, two other factors that go into it are 4 and 5. Okay, the factors of 100. The factors of 100, we find are 1 and 100. Okay, again, this number is even, 2 times 50. It's not divisible by 3. Uh, 4, 1 fourth of 100 is 25. Um, it ends in a zero. There's a zero in the ones place, so I know that it's divisible by five. Five times 20. Better stretch these out a little bit. Okay, um, finally I know that six, seven, eight, and nine don't go into 100, but 10 times itself is 100. So the factors of 100 are one, two, four, five, 10, 20, 25, 50, and 100, um, the greatest, or find the common factors. It looks like they both have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Those are all factors of 20 and 100. So, of course, the greatest common factor is 20. I'll take that greatest common factor, divide both terms in our fraction by it. 20 divided by 20 is 1. Uh, 100 divided by 20 is 5. Again, because I know that 5 times 20 is 100, reversing that order, and I can figure out my answer of 1 fifth. Okay? And that's basically taking a percentage, understanding that this percentage is equal to the number over 100 as a fraction, and then finding the greatest common factor and dividing both terms by it. And then we can cover both of these objectives. Okay? Let's read a little bit in the book. Lesson 90, follow along please. The new concept is on the bottom of page 587. It says the equivalent fractions pictured below name the same amount. Uh, we see that 4 eighths is equivalent to 1 half. We can reduce 4 eighths by dividing by, by 2, and they show that 4 eighths divided by 2 over 2 is 2 fourths. Um, if we reduce 4 eighths by dividing both terms by 2, we find that 4 eighths is equal to 2 fourths. However, fractions should be reduced to lowest terms. The fraction 2 fourths can also be reduced, so we reduce again. They take 2 fourths, divide by 2 halves, and they again reduce it further, and they reduce it to 1 half. 
a, the fraction 4 eighths reduces to 2 fourths, which reduces to 2 1 half. We reduce twice to find that 4 eighths equals 1 half. We can avoid the need to reduce more than once if we divide by the greatest common factor, okay, which I did right away. The greatest common factor of 4 and 8 were 4 fourths. They show that 4 eighths divided by 4 fourths is equal to 1 half. You can kind of get rid of this step. If, you've, if you understand it and if you do it consistently correctly, I'm okay and I feel comfortable with going from this step to this step rather than, than finding the greatest common factor and doing all that. Only with easy ones like fractions equal to one half. All right, um, let us continue. Example number one, it says there are four marbles. There are four marbles, blue marbles and eight white marbles in a bag. Let's draw a picture to show that. There are four blue marbles and eight white marbles in a bag. If one marble is taken from the bag without looking, what is the probability that the marble selected will be white? Okay, um, I understand that there are eight marbles, so that's my numerator. You count the total number of marbles, four, eight, 12, and that ends up being your denominator. There is an 8 in 12 chance that I will pull out a white marble. Now we find greatest common factor of the numbers 8 and 12. Okay, We know that two factors of 8 are always 1 and 8. We know that two factors of 12 are always 1 and 12. Both of these numbers are even, so 2 times 4 is 8. Um, 2 times 6 is 12. Is 12 divisible by 3? Yes. 3 times 4 is 12. Okay. Factors that they have in common are 1, 2, and 4, which means the greatest common factor of these two numbers is 4. Okay, now if I take this number, 8 twelfths, and divide it by and divide each term by its greatest common factor of 4 fourths, I find that. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. The probability that I will pull a white marble out of this bag of 8 white marbles and 4 blue mar marbles is 2 thirds, or a 2 and 3 chance that I'll pull a white marble. Okay, let's look at example number 2. It says the value of a dime is 40% the value of a quarter. Write 40% as a reduced fraction. Um, in this problem, we see that they give us not useless information as far as you know information that's kind of good to know but useless as far as the the question that they're asking asking us to answer so it says write 40 percent as a reduced fraction i have the number 40 percent okay first step put that number over 100 okay change this percent to a fraction by putting it over 100 now that i have 40 hundredths i need to find the greatest common factor all right, um, I guess, and they kind of have a skip a step. Um, not skip a step, but kind of remove that step because it's easier to go from this number to a reduced fraction, I guess, by not finding those greatest common factors. Um, I guess step number one, because both, both terms end in zero, what number is it divisible by? I hear everybody in the audience saying 10. That is correct. Okay, so the first step, the first thing that we can do is divide both terms by 10 tenths. Um, 40 divided by 10 is 4. 100 divided by 10 is 10. So now I have the term 4 tenths. Okay, the term, or the fraction 4 tenths. It isn't completely simplified though, um, because both of these numbers are even you can divide by two halves and get four divided by two is two, 10 divided by two is five. This is our reduced fraction. The percentage 40% is equal to two fifths. Now, I divided it by two different, two different fractions, 10 tenths and two halves, okay? If I would have just used greatest common factor, or I guess if the book would have used that greatest common factor instead of doing this, we could have eliminated some steps but we kind of would have had to add, we would have had to add a, another step, and that was finding the greatest common factor. Okay, so instead of 
instead of just noticing that that these both have a have a zero in the ones place and dividing by 10 over 10, we could have found the greatest common factors of 40 and 100. Um, I've done the factors of 100 um, right here already. So now I'm just going to find the, the factors that are equal to, come on. I'm just going to find the factors that are equal to 40 now. And then use that information that I've already taken care of. Use the information, use the factors of 100 that I've already done, and now find the factors of 40 so that I don't have to find those again. Okay? The factors of 40 are 1 and 40. It's even. 2 times what is 40? 2 times 20 is 40. Um, then we have 4 times 10, and we also have 5 times 8. Okay? Find the common factors. Um, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10 and 20. Looks like the greatest common factor of 40 and 100 is 20. So again, going directly from the fraction 40 hundredths, dividing by the greatest common factor of 20, dividing both terms by that, 40 divided by 20 is 2, 100 divided by 20 is 5. Okay, you will get you will get the same answer whether you divide by the greatest common factor or whether you d divide by I guess whatever factors you find available. Okay, you can do it multiple times as long as you're dividing by a fraction equal to one. Your the value of your fraction will not change. Again, we know that. Okay, let's do a few practice problems. Um, I guess hopefully you didn't or hopefully you recorded both examples one and two. Uh, because, of course, you have to turn it in and, and make sure that you show me that. Um, lesson practice one, it says, reduce each fraction to the lowest terms. A says 4 twelfths. Okay, 4 twelfths. Um, first, again, find greatest common factor. The greatest common factor of, or the factors of 4 are 1 and 4, and then 2 times 2. The factors of 12, of course, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, I know it's 2 because it's even, and then we have 3 times 4 is 12. So the greatest common factor is 4, divide this fraction by 4 fourths, and I get 4 divided by 4 is 1, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, you can write that, um, this answer down on the third example problem if you would like to. Okay, now example number 4, or a I guess example number four on your sheets, I want you to do practice problem B for it. Okay? Practice problem B says six eighteenths. Okay? You have to find greatest common factor of this of these two numbers and then reduce each term by that greatest common factor. Write that answer down for example number four. You can pause it now, work on that problem by yourselves, and I'm going to move on and, and do the next one. Okay? Um, the next one says, let's go to just practice problem E. This one you don't have to record, just follow along so that we can get a little bit of extra practice. Example E says 12 sixteenths. Okay, factors of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and we have 3 and 4. Okay, factors of 16. Of course, 1 and 16, 2 and 8, and then 4 times itself. Okay, the greatest common factor is 4. If I divide each term by 4, I come up with a reduced fraction of 3 fourths. Okay, let's do uh, one of the other practice problems. Let's do practice problem H. It has 3 fourths. times four-fifths. Okay, step number one, multiply. Three times four is 12. Four times five is 20. Now I find the greatest common factor of these two numbers. Okay, I've 
listed all the factors of 12 and 20. Now I find the greatest common factor is 4. I divide both terms by 4. I get 12 divided by 4 is 3. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And my reduced fraction answer is 3 fifths. Okay, let's do one more practice problem. Um, practice problem K. Okay. All they give us is 60% for practice problem K. All right, 60% as a fraction. Of course, we put 60 in the numerator, 100 in the denominator. I guess we can do it either way. We can find greatest common factor, or we can just, I guess, recognize that both of these, both of these terms in this fraction are divisible by 10 because they have a zero in the ones place. So if we divide by 10 over 10, okay, and we get rid of our zeros, 6 divided by 10 is, or 60 divided by 10 is 6, 100 divided by 10 is 10. Okay, now that we have the fraction 6 tenths, if you wanted to, you could divide that fraction by 2 halves. Okay, why do I know that I can divide each term by 2? Well, because both fractions are, or both, both terms are even. Okay, 6 divided by 2 I find is 3, 10 divided by 2 is 5. I have a reduced fraction of 3 fifths for the answer to practice problem K. Alright, if you have any questions, feel free to write them down in your sheets, bring them tomorrow, and I will look at them. Have a great day.